Art Nerds. Today we are off to Moe's Art Supply and Framing in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I've never been there, but I've heard good things and I'm eager to check it out. So let's go. Okay, so here's Moe's Art Supply. It's near Mid City Brew and it's close to a painting with a twist. Alright, so that wraps up my trip to Moe's. It's a small, quaint art supply store that should have at least all of your basics covered. So yesterday, I went to the Moe's Art Supply in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. There are three Moe's locations, one in Covington, one in New Orleans, one in Baton Rouge. I have never been to any of them. They are kind of a new thing since I graduated from UNO 10 years ago. and. Uh, I had business in Baton Rouge anyway, so I decided to stop over and check it out. The website says that they serve the LSU community, and the number one thing I can say about that particular Moe's location, having not visited the other two, is that it is quaint but accommodating. It, they've got a lot of supplies in a really small space. So I'm going to show you guys what I picked up at Moe's and uh, maybe demonstrate some of them for you guys. So like I said, Moe's is fairly small and I didn't really see anything new that I'd like never seen before. They do have a small fountain pen se section. Um, part of that is in their stationary section. That's where the cheaper stuff is. And then at the front, they have their Coeco stuff or Coeco stuff. Uh, their watercolor selection is pretty nice. They sell you know, every art supply store is kind of interesting in that nobody sells every brand that I've encountered. Maybe a really large Blick might, but even Blick doesn't often carry Turner. And Moe's was not an exception. I did like what they had, though. They had Windsor Newton. They had Sennelier. They had a lot of Daniel Smith. They had Holbein. And their Holbein was restocked. The, the plaza in Nashville, their Holbein section, every time I went to buy Holbein watercolors, they were always out of certain colors. Their watercolor pencil collection was fairly small. For example, they didn't have any of the Museum Acrel. They didn't have any super color. They basically had Derwent watercolor, Derwent ink tents, and Derwent, I'm sorry, Faber Castell. Oh, these are polychromos. Well, this is a polychromos, but this was in the um, Albrecht Durer section. So when I grabbed, I was just looking for, that's not really a problem. I do really like, but I was looking to get more. Why did they have polychromos in their watercolor pencil thing and not with their color pencils? I don't know. So that that's kind of disappointing because I bought a bunch of these to fill up gaps in my watercolor pencil collection and instead I got them to fill gaps in my color pencil collection. Now oh, well, say la vie. Also picked up a few strong colored Prismacolors. They have Prismacolor and they have Copic, but their Prismacolors, um, the bullet and chisel are stored with the brushes, so you really have to check. Now that I figured out, this one I didn't figure out until it was too late. 
And I also picked up an Uli fountain pen because most of my nice fountain pens are packed up since we just moved, but I've been playing around with some five below fountain pens and really liking them. I picked up a smaller butcher's tray because my large butcher's tray is really nice for mixing colors, but it takes up like half my desk. So I thought this would be handy for doing desktop demonstrations. And I picked up a couple of pencil sharpeners because I broke one of mine, womp. Coom pencil sharpeners are always great. Uh, this one's nice in that it has a spare uh, razor. I think most of the small magnesium ones I've gotten don't offer that, so that's nice. And then I got this one, which sharpens color pencils, big pencils, and then like regular school pencils. Thought that would be pretty handy. So I think the only thing you guys have probably not ever seen on this channel would be the Uli fountain pen and maybe the Mighty B sharpener. Oh, man. Okay. I've started to notice this. I don't know if it's me or if it's Prismacolor, but their tops have gotten increasingly difficult to remove. So with the brush and fine, you get a bullet tip on one end, a brush tip on the other. And if you're looking for more, I will link relevant videos throughout this little haul video. So, ooh. Polychromos are Faber-Castell's top-of-the-line color pencils, and while I do like them, I also prefer watercolor pencils, so I'm a little salty about that, and they do tend to be kind of pricey depending on where you're getting them from. I'm going to have to check the receipt now, or see if I can find it. Nope, not in either bag. That's unusual for me. Maybe she didn't give me one. Oh, well. Um, so I can't tell you how much I paid for these, unfortunately. And this was like $6, so not too bad at all. Just something kind of fun to play with since I've been using fountain pens in my Happy Planner. And usually when it comes to fountain pens, if I am buying fountain pens, I'm looking for something that is very easy to use, uh, has a flexible nib, ideally, that I can use for art something I can fill myself. I'm not a big cartridge person, although I have been using cartridges lately. Uh, something comfortable in the hand and, you know, something cheap is usually ideal. This is neat in that it's got a rubberized grip that's actually pretty comfortable. I don't think any of my fountain pens have that. So before I can ink this up, I'm going to need to clean it to remove any factory grease. But other than that, I don't think there's really anything on this haul that I haven't really talked about, including Holbein watercolors, which I've reviewed, and Sennelier, which I've reviewed, and these two are just refills for colors I use all the time. As for this, it's a pencil sharpener, and while I do review uh, mechanical pencils here on the channel, don't talk so much about normal school grade art, uh, art and stationery supplies. Time to play Becca's favorite game of Did I Buy Duplicates? So these are the swatches that I have. Or boo -doo -boo -doo -boo -doo -boo. Let's try again. Okay. These are my Prismacolor swatches for markers that I have with some of the duplicates marked in on the bottom. Lately, I've started buying a lot of duplicates. I don't know why. That's not a great thing. But I'm kind of trying to fill in some of the holes in my collection as well, particularly yesterday while I was at Moe's, I was looking more for really bright yellows and really bright oranges because when I was working on those witch pieces in October, those were areas my collection was kind of weak on. So we have PB5. I don't see your match. Looks like I get to come on down and be proud that I didn't buy a duplicate. Especially with how expensive Prismacolors actually are. You don't want too many dupes. I do not see PB16. Looks like we've got another ween run. And that would be orange. Then we have yellow orange PB15. I don't see. Oh, yep. No, I don't see it. Woo! A winner is me.
ADHD and a magpie-like obsession with colorful art supplies often means duplicates. Doopy doop doop. Woo! Who boy, Bowie? You really want to come in? What do you want? Think you want something, y'all? And then finally, PB19, which is womp 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 womp. Womp. Now legit, I am disappointed that these are polychromos and not Faber-Castell because I had checked just the other day for areas where I was kind of color weak and I didn't necessarily check my color pencils. Although, to be fair, these are probably areas where I'm color weak, but I also have a set of the polychromos so some of these might be dupes in that set. Oh, I must be going crazy. It probably did say polychromos, but it was right in the middle of all the watercolor pencils. And, oh yeah, I loan my color pencils out to a student and everything needs to still be resorted. It's sorted in a way that she found useful and in a way that I'm like, no, that's not helpful at all. So I guess I'll save that for another day. All right, so let's go ahead and catalog our watercolors. We've got a PWC that I didn't catalog last time I went to David's and an HWC that I picked up at Moe's. I think the PWC review still hasn't gone out to you guys. I don't know why I'm still holding on to it and why I haven't. So this thing, I've talked about this thing on the channel before. There's a whole video about this thing, but my friend Allie showed me how to make one of these. And if I was smart enough to remember to bring it with me, when I went shopping, I wouldn't have to worry about duplicates. very classily added a very much tacked on Canson XL watercolor section just for the PWC. Sometimes I'll be a good little artist and like mix it on my surface so that I get even mix. Sometimes I'm a bad little artist and do exactly what you guys saw me just do. And that was Ultramarine Violet from a trip to David's, which I have talked about many, many times here on this channel. And I encourage you to visit if you live in the greater New Orleans area. I'm originally from Luling. I live in Norco now. I make the trip. I think it is definitely worth my time. They're not a sponsor of the channel, but they always treat me really well. And um, the people who work in the shop are always very happy to help and answer questions and stuff. So I just think they're great and I think you guys should check them out. Finally, the reason I've been stalling for the Uli Splendid Pen. I am not super familiar with this brand in the US. It looks like they do cute, fairly affordable stationery. I'll have to check them out. They remind me a bit of the UB brand that Target carries. So the instructions are pretty simple. Unscrew, put in the cartridge, or remove the dead cartridge, put in the new cartridge, press firmly until you hear a click, and then re-screw. Re it says refills available at uli.com, and it is supposed to be a purple fountain pen. These look to be pretty standard size carts, actually. Let's compare these to the five below carts, because why not? I think those are standard size carts, too. Unscrew. Gonna have to carefully remove this. I don't want it to go everywhere. I've been using these in my journal, so that explains why. Yeah, they're the same cart. Quite possibly same manufacturer of the cartridges. Wouldn't really surprise me. It's cool to see more affordable fountain pens in the US. Fountain pens are a lot of fun. Um, Moe's did have fountain pen ink uh, cartridges as well as bottles. Mine is all packed up. So I guess I'm going to be using a lot of cartridge fountain pen stuff 
for the time being, and that's okay. Uh, this looks like it has teeny tiny holes. Yeah, it does. It has teeny tiny holes in the bottom. I did the blow test. And so you'd have to plug this up with something if you wanted to eyedropper convert this. So even though it looks like you should be able to, you can't. So don't. Um, this cap looks a lot like, like a pilot cap actually, but it doesn't have like a pilot petite one. It doesn't have that like plastic gasket on the inside to prevent evaporation. So these things probably evaporate pretty quickly. So use them before you lose them. I just washed this thing out in dish soap and water and I thought I got all of it, but I guess I didn't. So now I'm going to share a gross, 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 gross tip, especially during COVID. Uh, so only do this with yours and only do it after you've cleaned it with soap and water. But to remove excess water after I've just cleaned one of my fountain pens, I will blow on this end and force that water through the feed. I know. Some of y'all are probably like, ugh, she's gross. That's why you shouldn't borrow my art supplies unless I tell you you can. I wouldn't loan you something I put my mouth all over. And then you pop the cartridge in. I heard a click. I was talking over it, so you'll just have to take my word for it. Rescrew. We'll cap it for right now. I'll put these away. They might end up in my other fountain, my other five below fountain pens, the ones that didn't come with fun colors. Pick this up as well and go find a suitable piece of paper to test out on. So here I have some Strathmore 300 series mixed media paper. This is what I usually use for my alcohol marker reviews, but it's a fairly smooth surface. It's the type of stock I normally like to write on and dang it, a fountain pen should not be able to cut through or bleed through this paper. I'm being very, very fair here. All right, so our little cheap Uli pen has a fine nib. Looks like there would be no uh, give in the nib. And it's full of water still, unfortunately for me. So I can see a little bit of clear. You guys are not. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to work the water out of the nib and then check back in with you guys. So I was fable, finally able, fable, finally able to get it to write, and it's still a little muted since you know it's still got some water in it. But we can at least talk about how this thing writes. So I'm not necessarily a fine or extra fine kind of girl. I think any of my high school boys can tell you that, or rather, sorry, high school boyfriends can tell you that. Uh, I'm really more of a medium in that I'm heavy handed. I tend to bear down. Wow. Still describing my relationships here. And, uh, I like a pen that has some give to it, which this does not, this is basically an iron nail, maybe a little bitty smidgen of, of writing, but it doesn't mean it's a bad writer and it doesn't mean I'm not going to use it. It just means me Personally, I happen to like medium and to be fair, you know, a Japanese medium is very different from say a German medium I like the rubberized grip. That's actually pretty comfortable. I'm not really sure why this single pin costs $6 other than I bought it at an art supply store. And when you buy stationery at an art supply store, you're usually paying extra markup. Ink flow is okay. As I continue to work the water out of the nib, we have this kind of 
violet color rather than say like a blue a dark blue purple which is you know it matches the pen so that's what should have been what i would have expected ink flow seems to be fine not a lot of give not a lot of very variation in the nib the nib has been tipped which is that ball at the end actually let's quickly compare it to the purple five below pen all right, so this is one of the pens I picked up at Five Below. These were eight for five dollars, as opposed to one for six dollars. And when, with fountain pens and with art supplies, it isn't about what's cheapest. But when comparing apples to apples, things that perform pretty much the same, sometimes it is about what's cheapest. Okay, so this is a purple fountain pen, <laughs> way cheaper build quality than the Uli pen. See, it's purple. You can also not eyedropper converter this one because you can see clear through it. I will say the five below pins, I noticed they already have a tendency to dry out. I use them in my planner and there's nothing to seal the ink in the cap. This one is more of a true purple. Good ink flow, maybe too good ink flow. Um, very smooth writer, no ink issues. Honestly, these, all eight of these little cuties would be fine for school writing if you can find a teacher willing to accept purple ink. I don't know about y'all, but I think most of my teachers would have made me rewrite it if I was lucky. They would have just not accepted it if I wasn't. Okay, let's talk about the Uli one. For me, if it's dark enough for me to read, you can turn it in that way. Much finer than the five below nib, much smaller. This is like a medium, this is a fine. Uh, more personality in the nib, doesn't look quite as cheap. Nice rubberized grip, I do actually like that. The color is much lighter. But it seems to have good ink flow. wouldn't be likely to cut through your paper unless you just really left the pen on there for a long time and the ink saturated it. Both are tipped. So my thing about the Uli pen is I think this is a $5 pen. I think this is a $4 pen. I don't think it's a $6 pen. Again, you know, any pen you buy at an art supply store that is in the stationary section, it's probably going to cost a little bit more than what you'd see it online. Let's just call it the price of curation, the price of finding it in a brick and mortar shop, and the price of rarity because fountain pens are not that common in the U.S. at, you know, your average big box store. You're probably not going to find them at Target, although I found these at Five Below, so things may be a change in. You're probably not going to find them at Walmart, so you might actually have to hit up an art supply store to find fountain pens in person. But it's not bad. I'm going to look into Uli later on and decide whether that's something I would like to buy more of or if I'm just like, okay, that's a cute stationery that's intentionally overpriced. I don't need it. But of these two, I mean, I would say I like the eight color set a little bit better. You do get eight colors. I'm grabbing them. Sorry. You do get eight colors. Uh, they're all very cute colors. Most of them are good writers, although some of them are a little bit slower to start. There's going to be evaporation issues with these because these are not really sealed off. But again, they're $8. They take the same size cart as the Uli over there. So if you wanted, you could swap them. Uh, see what I mean by slow to start? This orange is always a little, always a little bit tricky. Don't know why. I still have a field test I need to do with these, so I gotta keep this orange writing. But you can see most of them, pretty easy to work with. About as comfortable in the hand as the Uli, although that rubberized grip does help a lot, especially for someone like me. So, anyway. 
I've already picked up most of the treasures that I purchased while at Moe's, but here are the ones that have not yet been put away. I hope you guys enjoyed this look at a semi-local art store here in Louisiana. I know we don't have a lot, and frankly, I'm always trying to provide you guys with good options, good alternatives to Hobby Lobby and Michaels, both of which tend to be very overpriced. So support local. You'll probably find better deals. You're definitely going to find better selection, and everything you want to look at isn't going to be locked up behind glass. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you check out Moe's, and if there is a Louisiana art supply store that I haven't talked about and that I should know about, let me know down in the comments below. I'll make it a point to head out there and let you guys know what I think. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye guys!